Thank you. In the pre-project briefing, I said that I was most interested in this budget insofar as it indicated the government's long-term direction of, of travel. There's much that's still to be revealed, not least in the comprehensive spending review and also in the next couple of budgets. And as far as this is concerned, really, I'm quite lukewarm about yesterday's um, budget. I feel that it's done the job of undoing the damage caused by Gordon Brown's um, most profligate budgets, but I, I think there are some um, points where the, the, the government has perhaps moved in the wrong direction and will have to take a different direction in the next few years. Um, before I talk about specific issues, let me first make a, um, a general point. Much is made of the £130 billion of spending reductions that will have to be made by 2015-16, uh, uh, and um, the 25% cuts in departmental budgets. It should be, should be noted that whereas um, Sir Humphrey might call these uh, cuts, these are actually cuts in projected increases. So rail spending is going to remain more or less flat over the next five years. They'll be paying for particular departments, especially if the welfare budget um, is not cut. But these are not um, spending cuts in the same way that uh, most households would um, uh, think of um, uh, cuts to their own um, personal budgets. Spending will also will still be about 40% of national income by 2015-16. And the budget pointed out that rarely, if ever, has the state raised on a sustained basis more than 40% of national income um, from taxation. And given the number of dysfunctional taxes which I think need to be abolished, together with the need to um, lower significantly taxes on working people, I hope that this 40% of national income will be a staging post to um, 30%, uh, a more appropriate long-term government spending target, I think, for um, a second um, uh, coalition or, or conservative uh, government. Um, I don't expect George Osborne to announce um, such a, a, a target explicitly, but I do hope that in the next comprehensive spending review and that over the next three budgets, George Osborne hints that 40% is not his, his final resting post as far as the proportion of national income that's going to be spent by government is concerned. Now a couple of specifics. I'm not highlighting here the the, the most important things, but, but a couple of measures which other people might not, a, a couple of areas that other people perhaps won't cover. Firstly, the bank levy. In my view, this is a big mistake and shows the government in quite a bad light, actually, in, insofar as the way it's been implemented is concerned. This is supposed to be a contribution um, from the banks for the economic costs that bank crises impose on the rest of society. However, it's just going into general spending coffers and will not be there next time there is a banking crisis it will have been spent. It should also be remembered that ultimately a bank levy is a levy on banks' business and personal customers. Secondly, there is a structural review of the banking industry um, taking place. And the government's view is that this should eliminate the risk of bank failure by better legal mechanisms and so on. Despite this, the bank levy is expected to double in 2012 from its 2011 level. As far as taxes are concerned, the bank levy, possible new environmental taxes, and the fall in the 40%, um, uh, the starting level of the 40% tax band to bring yet more people into what used to be the high rate of tax are all measures, I think, that point in the wrong direction and need to be reversed. On the other hand, the right approach, I think, was signalled by the change in corporation tax. Here we have a cut in rates, though I won't be content until the corporation tax rate is uh, equal to the basic rate of income tax and a reduction in the allowances which distort investment plans and impose costs on businesses, uh, in particular administration costs. As I've noted, whether we have um, radical spending reform will not be known until the comprehensive spending review at the earliest. But I think that the um, first round of benefit changes really do signal quite bad news. I had hoped that the creation of the disincentives from the withdrawal of means-tested benefits had hit its high watermark under the last Labour government but the Chancellor has decided to increase welfare benefits yet further, and this, as the Treasury's um, uh, own figures show, has increased significantly the number of families who, when they start to work more and earn more income, face very high tax and marginal benefit withdrawal um, rates. Um, so my overall message is this, really. With regard to fiscal consolidation, the budget is a relief. With regard to personal tax, government spending and welfare, um, there's much to be done. The corporation tax change really arose out of necessity, as the uh, Chancellor admitted, because companies are increasingly mobile in terms of their domicile. It would be nice if the government 
applied the logic that it applies to corporation tax um, payers who are very mobile and are able to choose their own tax system uh, to those of us who are less mobile and are forced to pay um, personal income tax and had as a priority a simple, flat and economically coherent tax system. Thank you.